First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Romain Rakutu Malala. I have been married to a marvelous woman for the last 39 years, and her name is Nivu. We have two children, Anza, our daughter, and Juru, our son. Anja is married to Harry. They have two boys, Numeni and Aiki. Juru is married to Uni and they have two daughters, Kantu and Lina. They are all members of the church. We live in Antananarivo, the capital of Madagascar. Madagascar is a large island, the size of Texas in the southeast of Africa. It has 22 million inhabitants who live mostly in the rural areas. Tana, the capital, has about 2 million people. I became a true Christian in 1994 and my wife in 1995. After having taken two Bible correspondence courses, what the Bible says and the school of the Master, which is an in-depth study of the Bible and sound doctrine from French missions in Geneva, Switzerland. A visit by Doilke, a missionary, encouraged me in the faith and to be a zealous servant of the Lord. Up until then, my wife and I had been deacons in a Presbyterian church where we were very active. After taking these correspondence courses and personal studies based on brochures furnished by the Two for Today organization of Circe in Arkansas and in French, my wife and I decided to quit our traditional church affiliation with great disapproval from our relatives and other church members. Please note the traditional family structures here are very community conscious and that religion is considered hereditary. My education was that of a school teacher and I taught the Malagasy language at its cultural traditions. I also had a formation in psychology and pedagogy at the University of Madagascar and I taught at a high school. I soon felt some discomfort with my profession when pitted against Christian values 
And so I resigned, not wanting to blend with the world. My wife and I started distributing Bible correspondence courses in French. She corrected the lessons and I contacted the students in order to answer their questions. Four of us started the first church in Madagascar. I started to evangelize my students while teaching at the high school in 1995, and a dozen of them were converted. One of them is today a preacher in the church. In 1996, I started weekly radio programs until mid-2013 at various stations. The last station belonged to the Catholic Church, but they cut me off when the priests found out that my preaching was not very Catholic. My procedure was as follows. First, face my audience with two radically different value systems, human, national, tribal, religious, traditional, and their results in terms of human teaching. Against that of the biblical values in terms of the teaching of Christ and the apostles and its results. It was a way of contrasting the works of the flesh with the works of the Spirit described by the Apostle Paul in Galatians, and thus I made them conscious of their spiritual condition. Second, invite my listeners to attend lectures I was given at our Center for Biblical Studies in order to develop the themes further. Third, distribute Bible correspondence courses, which I handed down personally or sent by mail. In them, I further developed the teachings. My wife would correct them. Fourth, meet those who had questions on the lessons and help them with their answers. Fifth, baptize those who were convinced of the truth. Those who have been aided by the Lord to his church continued their learning experiences and growth during services on Sundays and Wednesdays. Since 1996, I've baptized around 400 people, and about half of them are still active in the four churches here today. Each congregation is active and uses its talents well. Ay, tu te sobarque, tu imbarque, tu. Ay, tu te sotacaru. Lavare a quem, lavare quem a tu isa. Ah, uh, manangani te sonate qua. 
I taught the Malagasy language in Majanga for four years, from 1975 to 1978. There are 18 ethnic tribes in Madagascar and 18 different dialects. Official Malagasy and French are the administrative languages. It is the Lord who placed in my heart the desire to go to this coastal city in the northwestern part of the island, 430 miles away from the capital, with 800,000 inhabitants and capital of its province. I went there with my wife. Providentially, the Lord arranged for me to speak at a little Protestant church on Sunday. I spoke about biblical salvation. Afterwards, a couple, Emil and his wife, Justine asked if I could teach them more in depth in their home. We did go and I taught them and baptized them. They in turn talked to their neighbors who also were taught and baptized. We remained several days with them to strengthen them and thus was born the church in Majanga. They left their traditional church and met on Sundays at the house of Desiree and Lalau. Niva and I go and visit them as often as we can. Emil has a brother who lives in Mampikuni, a little town 170 miles away out in the bush. And Emil from Mampikuni, who has the same name as his brother in Majanga, was an evangelist of a traditional Protestant church in Mampikuni. Emil spoke to his brother Emil and he wished to meet with me. I went there with my wife and he and his wife Eliane were convinced of the truth. Several of his followers were also baptized including an 80 year old man and his granddaughter. The living conditions in Mampikuni were very poor for us who came from the capital. Just as with the Christians in Majanga, we visit them as often as we can in order to teach them in greater depth. Both of the Emil brothers are still active today in evangelizing in their province and we try to help them as much as we can. Valdi Eichmann visited them too, as well as the church in Tana and Majanga, in order to do some teaching. Incidentally, a pregnant woman attended Valdi's teaching and soon after gave birth to a boy. She and her husband named the child Valdi. Now he is a strapping young man. There are actually 
six churches out in the country, one in Majunga city, and five spread out in the bush, inaccessible even by four-wheel drives. The people travel by ox carts. The leaders of these congregations meet once a year in Majanga and twice a year in Mampikuni for about 10 days of biblical teaching. We usually pay for their expenses because they are very poor. These churches have a total of 400 members. In Majanga, in the year 2000, I got acquainted with the manager of a local radio station. Its name is Kevin. This is an evangelical station. He invited me on his platform to speak for 30 minutes. Afterwards, he asked me to run a one-hour program during every night of our stay there. I offered to send him some cassettes of previous program I had heard in Tananarivu, which he could then broadcast all here long. He agreed. Now I'm still sending him CD, which I record in my office. I make sure that the listeners get Emil's address so that they can obtain correspondence courses from him in the Malagasy language. These are printed in Antananarivo. We are also planning to go and teach some of the Bible students who have recently been baptized in Julia, which lies 600 miles from here. But the road to it has a bad reputation of being insecure. Armed men are involved in daily attacks, according to the newspapers. We are waiting for the situation to stabilize before going there. As to the political and economic crisis, which has been going on for the last four years, Several radio stations have been shut down 
including one that was ready to let me air some programs. Those stations still open are reluctant to let me speak. That is when I come up with the idea of writing booklets, brochures and flyers in the Malagasy language. We suffer from a lack of good material and the brothers and sisters out in the country who can read can really profit from them and they are also useful in the churches of the capital. I thank God for his love, for his goodness in choosing me and my wife for this work into which we have poured our hearts and that in spite of the political and economic crisis which causes disorder and insecurity I can continue to evangelize, distribute Bible correspondence courses, teach, lecture, receive people for counseling, preach on the radio and preach and teach in churches and write brochures. The circumstances are trying, but the Lord gives us health and joy in his work. I am grateful to him for having given me a family that loves and respects him. And you, brothers and sisters in Christ, I thank you for your prayers for us, your encouragement to our work and for your precious support. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. The Lord bless you. Love,